What's going on, guys? Welcome back to Reddit Question of the Day, where I go over the questions that you guys post on SAT subreddit. And if it's your first time here, my name's John, and I've been helping students raise their SAT score to the moon for the past decade, and it's a long period of time, and I need to find better things to do with my life, but not today. Today, we're going to go over two questions that people post on Reddit, okay? So let's get straight into it. Guys, these questions are going to show up over and over and over again just with different words and different numbers so make sure you really understand how to solve these questions okay if you if you don't understand these questions you're probably going to miss a couple questions on the future exams where it actually matters okay make sure you pause the video try it out for yourself and make sure you can get it okay if you can't that's when you play the video and start watching okay so let's get into it guys so let's look at the first question here Let's look at the question. Um, if the order pair x, y satisfy the system of equations above, what's the possible value of x, right? Hmm, what does it mean? So there's a couple important things for you to understand here. When you ask someone like how to solve this question, they're gonna tell you, oh, what you have to do is just like just set them equal to each other, okay? You, set, you have to like set equations equal to each other and that's how you get to the answer, right? That's right, but thing is, you need to understand exactly why, why? why we have to set these equations equal to each other okay because when a variation of this question shows up you're not going to re recognize that you have to set them equal to each other okay and how you how would you recognize them in the future by understanding why we have to set them equal to each other okay and that's exactly what we're about to go over so we're looking so we're looking for a possible value of x where it satisfies the system of equations right so system of equations is referring to these two equations right there and what does it mean to satisfy well, satisfying means to make the equation true, okay? And what it means to make the equation true is x and y's makes sense when you plug in, okay? So for instance, let's say we have a graph right here, y is equal to 4 minus x, equation right here, and we're trying to come up with points that make the equation true, okay? Something that makes sense when we plug in, okay? So let's make a quick table. Let's say x is 1. If you plug in 1, 4 minus 1 is going to be 3, 2 is going to be 2, 3 is going to be 1, and so on, right? So these points are what makes the equation true, which means that's just, these are the points that satisfy this equation right there, okay? And these points, when, you're, um, when you have a set of them, you pl plot them together, 1, 3, 2, 2, 3, 1, and then it goes something like that, right? Okay. So graph is a collection of points that makes the equation true or satisfy the equation. Okay, that's important. Graph is collection of points that make the equation true. Okay, or it satisfies. Okay, so if you got this, we're ready to move on to the next part. So let's go back to the question. Let me erase a little bit of these to make sure it's not too complicated. We're looking for something that satisfies not just this equation or that equation, but we're looking for something that satisfies this system of equation, right? We're looking for a set of points. We're looking for these set of points, which makes the equation true, not just for the first equation or the second equation, but for both of them, right? How can we find these two points? Well, simple solution is for you to graph them. So let's go here. If you look at the first equation right there, we already know it's going to be a in the shape of what? Parabola. Good, because the highest exponent is 2. So it's going to be in the shape of parabola. And we know the second equation is going to be in the shape of a line because the highest exponent is 1. Okay, so it's going to be a line. And if we were to kind of roughly, just roughly, roughly, super roughly sketch them out, it looks something like, something like this. It's probably off by a whole lot, but for the sake of just visualizing it, it's going to look something like this, right? And we're looking for something that satisfied the system, right? Something that satisfied both of them, right? And going back here, we know that this graph, this graph is just a collection of points that satisfy that equation right there. So if you look at this red line right here, these are the points that make this second equation true. And this parabola right here is just a collection of points that makes the first equation true. Okay, and if we're looking for something that makes both of these systems true, what would that be? That would be exactly where the intersection is. Okay, the intersection. 
Why is that true? Because at like this point right here, the parabola has that point and the line also has this point right here, which means when you plug in certain X value, you're going to get certain Y value out for same thing, same value for the line and the parabola, which means it makes it satisfy the system of equations above right there. Does that make sense? So once we got that down, how can we find out exactly where it is? Let's go back here. We realized we saw that it, they're going to have the same Y value, right? That means when an X value is plugged in, the first equation is going to equal to certain Y value. And second equation is going to equal to the same Y value because at this point, they share that same X and Y coordinate, which means these two equations right here, they're going to be equal to each other because they share the same Y values. Okay. So what can we do here? That means we can do X squared minus four X plus four is equal to four minus X. We can set them equal to each other because they share the same Y value. Does that make sense? Good. And after we did that, what we can we do is just isolate the variables and the numbers and solve for the variable. So let's get into it. Minus four plus X minus four plus X. That's going to look like X squared minus three X plus zero is equal to zero. X squared minus three X is equal to zero. And we can factor out the X because it's common to a uh, common factor. It's going to become X minus three is equal to zero. And that tells us that X can be either zero or three. Okay. So our answer to the question is going to be zero to three. These are the points that makes these equations true. Okay. These are the, these, uh, the zero and three right here are the X points, X coordinates where these two graphs are intersecting. Does that make sense? Good. So a couple of things you really need to know here is first you need to understand what it means to satisfy the equation. Okay. What does it mean to satisfy the equation? It makes the equation true. The coordinates that make the equation true. Okay. That's what satisfies the equation. And how do we find a point where it satisfies both of these equations? That's where the intersection occurs because at the intersection, they share the same X and Y coordinate, which means we can have the same Y coordinate and these two equations right there, they can be equal to each other. Okay. So if you understand these two things right here, you are good to go. Whenever you see, you see a variation of this question, you're going to know exactly what to do. Okay. All right, guys, let's move on to the second question. Okay, so a customer paid $53 for a jacket after a 6% sales tax was added. So sales tax was 6%. Okay, what was the price of the jacket before the sales tax was added, right? So what we're looking for is price of the jacket. Okay, do we know what the price of the jacket is? We don't. And if you don't know what the value is, you always plug in a variable for SAT. Okay, so for jacket, we're just going to put J. Does that make sense? Good. So let's how let's see how we can solve this question out. Let me give you a quick example. Let's say you just went into the store and bought a jacket. Okay. So this is what you buy, and this is the what you paid for, and this is the cost. Okay. Let's say you bought the jacket, then you just buy the jacket, right? And what essentially what you're paying for is just jacket, right? Let's say the tax doesn't exist. Okay. If you bought the jacket, then you just pay the jacket, which means you're paying 100%. You're paying 100% of the cost, right? Because you bought the jacket, you buy the jacket, you pay for the jacket. That means you paid 100% of the jacket's cost. But let's say we have a tax. You buy jacket and then you have to pay for what? You have to pay for jacket plus tax, right? Okay. So when you're paying for a uh, jacket, it's 100% of the jacket's cost, right? And you also have to pay for tax, which is 6% of the jacket's cost. And the total you pay is going to be 106% of the jacket. Does that make sense? With the tax, what you're essentially paying for is 106% of the jacket. Okay. And what does this 106% come out to? It comes out to $53. Does that make sense? And all we have to do is just kind of write this out in a simple form. Okay. So $53 is 106% of the jacket cost. Okay. So one second, um, you might be wondering like, why are we adding these two numbers here? I mean, that's because tax is what you pay on top of the jacket's cost, right? Therefore you are adding these two percent right there. Okay. Just want to cover that. 
So second step, after we got this equate, uh, after we got this phrase right here, what we have to do is just convert words into numbers. And let's see how we can do that. $53 is 106% of jacket's cost, right? So $53, which is going to be $53, actually, $53 is, because it is an equal sign, 106% of the jacket's cost, right? So whatever the j whatever the jacket's cost is it's going to be j and you're going to multiply that by 1.06 and that's where 106 percent came from and 100 uh, 1.06 is just a decimal version of percent okay and whenever you're trying to find a percent of something you have to multiply by the decimal version of the percent to whatever you're buying Okay, if you multiply the percent like 106, it's going to look super weird. You don't want to do that. Okay, so by uh, finding a percent of something, you have to multiply by the decimal version. So if you do that, that leaves us, leaves us with J, which is the cost of the jacket. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, we're looking for the price of the jacket. So how do we find out what J is equal to? You just divide it out, isolate the variable. And if you do that, you just end up with 50, and that is going to be our J value right there. And our answer is going to be B. Does that make sense? The most important thing for you to understand here is how we got to this, well, not three. How, this uh, most important thing for you to understand here is how we got this 106% right there, okay? And next thing is make, coming up with this kind of phrase. Why keep writing three? On, coming up with this kind of phrase, and then converting it to an equation if you understand all these three steps like 100 then you are golden and of these three steps the most important thing is step number one okay 100 106 percent understanding where those things came from and if you understand that you're going to be set and that's going to be it for today's video guys we just went over two questions today in very in-depth today first one was finding a solution to the system above and second one was finding the original price of the jacket before the tax was added Guys, don't try to memorize like what I did in each step. Just rather than memorizing, make sure you focus on understanding why we did like these certain steps, okay? Because if you memorize these steps without understanding them, you can only solve this question, like this jacket question, which will never show up on the SAT ever and ever again. But if you understand, if you understand exactly why we did, why, why we did, why we did certain steps, then if the question comes up with a different version with different numbers, you will still know how to solve and how to approach these kind of questions, okay? That's why it's so important for you to understand, not memorize, understand why we did certain things and focus your understanding on these one, two, and threes, okay? And, and lastly, guys, if you guys like the video, hit the like button. If you guys love the video, hit the subscribe button because I'll be going over these questions in depth and try to give you guys the best direction possible so that you won't miss these kind of types of questions on the future exam. And these videos are going to come up pretty often, maybe like every day if, I, if possible. Also guys, there is going to be a link in the description box where you can join a Facebook group of a bunch of high school students who are highly motivated to get a perfect score on the SAT. And I'm also going to be in there answering any of the questions that you guys have and just giving out all the tips and tricks from a decade of tutoring experience so you guys can take advantage of it and beat the school system and go to the college of your dreams. So there's a link down below. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.